Asexual reproduction is the art of making new babies or offsprings from just one parent. In contrast, sexual reproduction is where offsprings are made from two parents, one male and a female. Like in human beings, a male and a female unite to give babies. But in asexual reproduction, we get offsprings from just one parent. And a lot of animals and bacteria and plants undergo asexual reproduction. And therefore, let's talk about their types. So let me get rid of this. Asexual reproduction can be broadly classified into five types. And let's not worry about their names right now because I, I wanna talk about them in great detail and I can't do that in one single video. And so in this particular video, we will focus only on the first type called fission. So let's talk about fission. Okay, so what exactly is fission? Fission is basically a cell splitting into two. So let me just write that down. Fission is cell splitting, that's important, a cell splitting into, into two or more. It doesn't have to be just two. It can be two or more cells. Now at first you might be saying, hey, this is just cell division, right? Why do we call this as a reproduction method? Well, think about it. In multicellular organisms, like in you and me, cell division just makes more cells inside the body. So that's not reproduction for us. However, if you consider unicellular organisms, organisms that just have one cell, only one cell. Now imagine if that splits into two, we will now have two individuals. Or in other words, reproduction has happened, right? And therefore, fission or cell division is a kind of reproduction for unicellular organisms. Not for multicellular, but for unicellular organisms. So let's take the example of amoeba, the most famous unicellular organism you might know. When amoeba matures, meaning when it's ready to reproduce, we will see some changes happening. First of all, we'll see that its nucleus starts to elongate like this. Inside the DNA starts getting copied. Eventually, as time passes by, we will see that the nucleus starts splitting into two. After the copy of the DNA has been made, the nucleus starts splitting into two, as you can see over here, and eventually that amoeba splits into two new amoebas. Now, since two brand new amoebas are born from a single parent, this qualifies as asexual reproduction. And a couple of interesting things to notice is in asexual reproduction, we will find that the offsprings are identical to the parents. We say they are clones of the parents in all kinds of asexual reproduction, not just fission. And why is that? Well, that's because if we just have one parent, only its DNA gets copied. And so the DNA over here is exactly same as the DNA over here, unless you know there's some kind of mutation. But in sexual reproduction, there is a DNA mixing that happens and that's why the offsprings will not be identical to their parents. Like in humans, you are not exactly identical to your mother or father because you have a mix of their DNA. And the second thing to see about fission especially, especially is that you can see that the parent itself split into two new babies. We usually call them as daughter cells, okay? So the parent itself split into two daughter cells. All right. Now, based on how fission takes place, we can further classify fission itself into different kinds. So, let's take the example of amoeba itself. In this example, we see that the fission is happening along this axis, right? This axis, let me draw that over here also. Okay, now could this amoeba, would ha could this amoeba split along some other axis, say along this axis? The answer is yes. It could have elongated this way and finally split like this and this as well. That's also fine. It could have also split along this axis. The amoeba can also split along this axis. So as long, when it comes to amoeba and some other unicellular organisms, we will find that there is, they can, they can split or fission can happen along any particular axis. Okay, so one kind of fission is this irregular kind of fission that can happen along any axis. But in some other unicellular organisms, we will find that fission happens in a fixed axis. So let me take an example of that. Let me just make this picture small. Uh, okay. 
hey, I think that's five. All right, let me just keep that over here. And now let's talk about another organism called Leishmania. You can see it has what your textbook calls it, a whip-like structure. If you're wondering what a whip is, whip is that leather thing which when you hit, it, it does that sound. <laughs> Anyways, so if you take a, an, an organism which has that structure like this, this is also unicellular, it also undergoes reproduction by fission, but what's interesting over here, or what's different over here at least, is that the fission can only happen along this plane. Along this plane, as you can see. The fission cannot happen along this plane. So let me just put a cross over here. This cannot happen, or along any other plane. The fission can only happen along this plane. Now, can you pause for a while and think about why this might be the case? Well, if you guess it might have something to do with this whip, it's not called whip, the technical name for this is flagellum. Anyways, if you're wondering it's got something to do with that, then you're absolutely right. You see, when this Leishmania divides, it has to make a copy of this flagellum It's also, right? And that can only happen if division happens along this axis. Just imagine, if division happened along this axis, this bottom one, that will not get a copy of this whip because that's over here. And so, in this one, in this particular case, uh, the fission happens only along fixed axis. So one way we can divide fission, further classify fission, is we can say fission that hap happens along any axis or fission that can happen along a fixed axis. All right, now you can see that in these two cases, even though the fission is happening irregularly over here and in a fixed axis over here, what's common in both of them is that in both these cases, they are dividing into exactly two new offsprings. Right? On the other hand, there are certain unicellular organisms that can divide into more number of offsprings. Let me give you an example of that. An example of that would be plasmodium. When plasmodium is ready to divide, what you will find is that it will split simultaneously into more than two. I've just shown five as an example over here, but it can split in, into, uh, into more than two offsprings. And as a result, eventually more than two copies or more than two offsprings are made over here. So this is another way in which we can classify fission. We can say one kind of fission is where two, two offsprings are formed. We call this binary fission. Binary fission. And what do you think we'll call this one? Well, since more than two offsprings are formed, we'll call this multiple fission because multiple offsprings are formed. This is called multiple fission. And you can guess now by multiple fission that organisms can spread rapidly. And in fact, plasmodium is the one that causes malaria inside us. So let me just write that down as well. Okay, oh, let me use a different color. All right, so plasmodium is responsible for causing the disease malaria. And since we're talking about disease, Leishmania is responsible for causing the disease called Kala Azar. And if you're wondering suddenly, why am I talking about diseases? That's because your exams will ask you these questions. They'll ask you what causes malaria or what causes Kala Azar or they'll ask you what disease Leishmania causes or what disease Plasmodium causes. So just for that sake, I thought I should mention this. So that pretty much wraps up our fission. So to quickly summarize, fission is basically cell division. We call it as reproduction for unicellular organisms because in unicellular organisms, if a cell divides, then we have brand new individuals. We can classify them into two kinds. The binary fission is the one where we get two offsprings. Multiple fission is the one where we get multiple offsprings. That's one way to classify fission. Another way to classify fission is based on which orientation, when, along which axis it undergoes fission. Um, one way, some kind, some, some unicellular organisms undergo fission in any axis. Whereas in some other cases, they will go undergo fission along a fixed axis.